Welcome into another episode of The Outlet brought to you by NBA Live 19. Today, our special guest is, of course, the head coach of the Phoenix Suns, Monty Williams. Monty, thanks for hanging out with us today. How are you doing? I'm well. Thank you for having me. It's great to be in Phoenix. Of course. So uh, just to get things out of the way off the top, the first thing I need to know, <laughs> when it comes to interviews, are you more of a Coach Pop or are you more Coach Steve Kerr? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Neither. The, both of those guys are uh, well-spoken, highly intelligent, have a thought, and... Um, well versed in politics and other issues. Um, if we were talking about fishing or dogs or um, pick and roll defense, <laughs> something like that, I'd be uh, higher on the list. But those guys are amazing on TV. I um, I marvel at Pop at his ability to uh, navigate certain situations. And Steve, um, a lot like Doc Rivers, he's. Uh, He's just good. When you watch those guys, you're like, man, I can't do that. I'm just going to stick to basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like what I've seen so far from you, you're pretty up there with them, too. Uh, I think you're selling yourself a little bit short. You know, I, for <laughs> me, I, I want to be able to uh, promote the things that are important to me. And um, where we are right now, it's, it's this organization, our players, um, the city that has... Um, basically wrap their arms around me. I've only been here a few weeks and uh, it's been a really cool time. So anytime I can promote that uh, to the rest of the league, you know, I'll do my best. So how has that been? Settling in really well? You guys find a place to live, all yeah, that? Yeah, we found a spot, um, found the school for my kids. Um, next on my list is a church. I'm okay. going to do that this weekend. And uh, it's been really um, a good transition. Um, my family is excited. My kids are still in New Jersey. They don't get out of school until the 21st, and so they're they're itching to get down here. And they've never experienced 110, 112. I was going to say, are they so really that excited? They might not be as excited once they feel the heat. <laughs> it's, it's better than snow. <laughs> this is so true. So they don't have to shovel. They can just go in the house. Um, hopefully the doors are unlocked. So yes. we'll see how that goes when they get here. And one of the cool things about Phoenix, too, is its proximity to, like, Flagstaff and Payson and Prescott. Yeah. Like, it's an hour, two-hour drive, and the temperature is so much nicer. So it's easy to escape yeah. the heat, really, in the, the summer. Grand summertime. Canyon's on our list this summer. Oh, so nice. We'll yes. see how that goes. That's always a good one to visit. Hey, if you're smoking a cigarette right now while you're listening to my podcast, I need you to put it out and visit ashline.org because you've got to stop smoking or using tobacco. Plus... It's so much better for your health. Just do it. Ashline.org. All right, coach. Let's get into your coaching staff. <laughs> I'm sure you're so excited to have that more finalized. Yeah. You have some actual familiar faces in here and get that process working. So you want to go down the list and talk about what makes each one of these guys special and unique and why you wanted them to be well, a Well, why don't you team? name a guy? Okay. About... Willie Green. Yeah, Willie's... Um... He's one of the younger guys in the NBA that I look up to. Um, he's just a, a good man, an unbelievable coach. I coached him in New Orleans. Um, I could, I'd be here all day talking about Willie. Uh, I think Willie is going to have an impact on Devin that um, is going to take our program to a level that uh, is going to be really good here in the future. Uh, Willie has had, has had an impact on me. Um, he and Tara and, and the kids, I've known them, gosh, for the past 10 years now um, as a coach. And then Willie was a rookie when he, when he was in Philly. I was his vet, <laughs> and uh, he had to put up with me. And then I coached him as a head coach, and he had to put up with me even more. And now he's got to do it again. I but, mean, he must really like you if he agreed to come. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, a, it's a job in the NBA, so we'll uh, – <laughs> We'll make it work out. But I, I love Willie and Tara. I can't – I'd be here all day talking about those two. Mm -hmm. um, just have the utmost respect for them and who they are as people. And, of course, the experience that comes with the Golden State Warriors and yeah. that championship pedigree. Yeah. So. We hope to tap into exactly. a lot of that. Yep. Okay. Darko Ryakovic. Darko is um, – he will help me a ton on offense. Um, and I think he would – he would want everybody to know he's more than an offensive coach. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a European flavor that I 
value a ton. Um, I watch a lot of European basketball, and we, and we tend to run the same kinds of offenses. They get to run more offenses um, for time than we do. But Darko brings a European flavor that you're starting to see more in the NBA, but he really helps me with wrinkles, um, ATOs, end-of-game plays. Uh, he and I um, began a relationship in um, OKC. He's a really good coach. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I, I feel like he's going to have some opportunities to be a head coach on some level in, in years to come. Absolutely. One thing I thought that I read that was so interesting is he's fluent in six languages. Did you know that? No. I'm That's still what working I read. on English. That's insane. I'm struggling with Same. <laughs> English and I thought slang. that was uh, really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mark Bryant. Mark is um, he's he's known as a big man savant. Um, but what we've wanted to do here is give guys like Mark a chance to show the NBA world uh, and the world in general that he's more than just a big man coach. Uh, Mark's going to be on the bench full time. He's done wonders with a number of players, not just bigs, but he's going to have a hand in uh, DeAndre's growth as a, as a man and as a player. And he's going to make me better. Mark's not afraid to tell me the truth, and he's bigger than I am, so <laughs> he's, he's already got me in a corner. But I, I really feel like Mark is going to be a bit of a cornerstone for us going forward, um, just who he is as a coach and as a man. Is that something you saw during your time together at OKC? Or well, have you seen that kind yeah. of develop throughout his time as a, in, in a coaching position? We played together in Philly, mm -hmm. and um, you know the guys that like to be in the gym. Um, practice would be over, and Mark and I would be after practice playing one on one. And this was after um, two and a half, three hour practices. You know, the NBA doesn't do that anymore, but back in the day, we actually practiced. <laughs> and uh, Mark and I and a couple of other guys would stay after and just play one on one, talk trash, play horse. And then when we got to OKC and coach together, we did the same thing. We would play horse and work out and, and go outside and work out, talk basketball, talk family. Um, he's, he's a guy that I admire, um, but he's also a, a man that is a really good coach, and I think you're going to see that here. Very cool. All right, Randy Ayers. Randy's um, he's like my go-to. Um, he worked with me in New Orleans. I played for him in Philadelphia uh, with Mark. Um, when I, we hired Randy in New Orleans, I knew – that I needed someone who had kind of been there, done that, um, the kind of man he is. Uh, he and Carol have two amazing uh, young men as sons, and I just felt like he was going to be someone that was going to corral our staff, but also be a man that our players can look at and go to for wisdom that I don't have um, because he is a bit older. He won't like me saying that, but he is a bit <laughs> older and he's a bit wiser than I am. All right, Larry Greer. LG is just a grinder. Mm -hmm. um, I met him in Portland. He was a Portland scout. And when I played, I never paid much attention to scouts because you just play. And then when I got into coaching, I realized those guys are nuts. Uh, they travel all over the country. They watch more games than anyone just so they can find one more play that will help us um, scout better and plan better. And I saw his love for the game, but I also saw his love for his family. Um, and Larry's been here in Arizona before he coached mm -hmm. at Arizona ASU. State. So he's got scouting. He's got college experience. He's been in the NBA for a long, long time. He's a basketball man. And when you hear people say that about um, coaches, um, it says a lot. When people say you're a basketball guy, that's saying a lot. And, and Larry's every, every bit of that. Steve Blake. Yeah, Steve's a guy that I coached <clears throat> in Portland. Mm -hmm. um, he knows the league. He wanted to get into coaching. He was in player development in um, Portland. And um, I had to do some coaxing to get <laughs> he and Kristen to come down here to Phoenix, not because they didn't want to come to Phoenix, but they had a good situation in Portland. And I felt like Steve, um, not only has he been a good player in the league for a long time, he was going to be huge for us as far as player development was concerned. Um, he was a guy that I spent – a lot of hours in the gym um, working on his game. And um, he used to kick my butt in one-on-one -on -one <laughs> full court. 
<laughs> on many occasions. Has he still got you? Oh, yeah, more than likely. <laughs> um, so, so I think he's going to be a huge asset for us as we move our player development program to another level. Yeah, Damian Lillard has come out, and he's had some really positive things to say about Steve. So, yeah. And he's always a great guy. Yeah. So always good to hear that from yeah. other players in, in the league as well. Hey, have you ever had the itch to become a general manager? Well, in NBA Live 19, you can become the GM and work the Suns into a title contender in no time. Hold lineups, draft players out of college. It's your team, and it's your role. Well, with that said, Coach, you've got your staff kind of in place. Mm -hmm. You're here settling in. What can fans kind of expect from you leading this team and and this wonderful group of guys behind you? I hope they see um, that we're not going to skip steps. Um, Everybody talks about winning a championship. Um, Not many have gone through the process and understand how hard it is. Um, All you can do, and it's hard, is give yourself a chance to be a top four team um, in your conference and in the league. And if you can get to a conference finals, um, it says a lot about your program, but the work that goes into that is monumental, and we're just not going to skip steps. Um, I've seen it around the NBA where teams um, sign a player or make a move that um, kind of pushes the chains ahead, but it doesn't sustain the ability to be successful for a long time. And I hope that our our fans um, will see a workmanlike approach from us this summer. Uh, we have some culture changes that we need to address. Um, we have to touch our players this summer and, and listen to them and, and stress the things that we feel are important. And the fans won't see it this summer, but I hope that when they see us play for the first time, uh, they see something that's um, going to be you know, really special someday. And, and that will be a, a team that um, works harder than any team in the NBA. And I think most players feel like they're playing hard until they're, they're around a, a situation like ours. And that, that's one thing I want to stress um, from our players is in order for us to get um, this thing moving in a direction that we want it to, we got to work harder than anybody else in the NBA. And I hope our fans see that. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's going to be a lot of hard work put in behind the closed doors this yeah. season or this off season, but you know, coming into this position, what gave you the feeling that this organization was headed in the right direction and you could help push that along? Uh, James, my conversations with James and, and Jeff and, and Trevor, and um, I've said this a number of times, the transparency that myself and Mr. Sarver had with each other um, gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I, I've been in situations the last few years where I've talked to teams and not that they were offering me the job, but I did talk to a number of teams. Um, the level of transparency that we had with each other was refreshing, but it was also inspiring. And then when I listened to James's vision, it aligned with my own. And I felt like James was going to be someone that was going to push me to be a better coach. Um, James has been in championship environments. He's won three championships. Not many people can say that. And that, for me, um, was not only inspiring, it was exciting. And then you're talking about the Phoenix Suns, you know, the fifth winningest team in the history of the NBA. Um, Not many people can say that. Um, We just haven't won a championship, and we all won it. And when I'm here in town um, at the store or I was at a car dealership, you could feel it, like people want it here. And, you know, if you – listen to the NBA nonsense on TV or all they talk about is the major market teams. Like they're the only ones that can win a championship. And I want people to know that we have a chance to win one. It's going to take some time, but we have a chance to win one here and it's going to take everybody. Listen, if your New Year's resolution was to quit smoking tobacco and you're still using tobacco today and it's June, you should check out ashline.org because using a quit coach will help your chances of successfully quitting tobacco go way up. So seriously, ashline.org, check it out today if you want to quit using tobacco. Has that always been a high priority for you when looking at talent, just focusing more on their character? Not more, but just in addition to? I think so. I think um, for me, 
um, as far as I can remember, a character has always been something that's been ingrained in me from my high school coach, my little league coach, Coach Westbrook, high school coach Taft Hickman, all the way to Coach Pop. Um, if you don't have character, you can't handle the tough days. Uh, there's going to be times where our film sessions are going to be tough. Um, you're going to have situations where you're playing four games in six days, uh, soreness, uh, family situations, um, dealing with a winning streak, um, a losing streak. They all take character. And I think when people hear character, they think you only want uh, choir boys. Well, we're not singing. Uh, we need guys who can handle um, an environment that allows for you to have a chance to win a championship someday. And it's my belief that character guys handle it better. All right, Coach, last thing I got for you, some rapid-fire questions so we uh -oh. can get to know you on a personal level a little oh, bit. Gosh. Are you ready for this? They're going to be yeah. really easy, I promise. Did you have a pregame routine as a player, or do you have one now? I did as a player. Um, I do now. I, I'm not superstitious about it. I'm just boring, so I just kind of do the same thing over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> was that the same as a player who was just kind of sort of, yeah, pretty boring. <laughs> I just didn't want to change for no other reason than I was just lazy. Okay, so I just did the same thing. I'm all with the time. it. <laughs> when you're on the road and you get to a hotel after a late night of travel. Do you go straight to sleep and work in the morning, or do you get all your work done before you go to sleep that night? Oh, it varies. Um, if it, it depends on the situation. Um, sometimes when you win a big game, those are the best opportunities to teach. Okay. And so I want to work as hard as I can after a big win and really hit the, the tough stuff the next day. Because um, sometimes players tend to get happy on the farm after a big win. It's a great opportunity to to teach the next day. Um, sometimes after a bad loss, you flush it. Mm -hmm. um, if you have character guys, they know they didn't play well. You know you didn't coach well, and sometimes you let it go. So it depends. It depends on the situation. Okay. Favorite NBA city to travel to? Oh, man. Favorite NBA city. Uh, I'm going to sound like a homer, but... <laughs> I, I liked Phoenix a lot um, just because we stayed right across the street from the mall. And so I could just go get something to eat and go back to my room and mm -hmm. go to bed. Um, I really enjoyed Chicago. Um, I went to school at Notre Dame, and so I, I knew a lot of people in that region. I always go, enjoy going back home to Washington, D.C. Uh, to see my family in Charlotte. I have a ton of family in North Carolina. But other than that, I'm probably not a tour, tour guide when it comes to NBA cities. Okay. I, just, I just know where the grocery stores are and how to get back to my hotel room. I mean, that's the most important part, right? <laughs> food and sleep. I have to send myself a pin sometimes of my hotel so that when I go wander and look for food, I can find my way back. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. Uh, I think I know the answer to this one, but favorite summer activity? I love to fish. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a trip. Right after the draft, uh, I'm going to go to Florida and try to catch a tarpon. Okay. Uh, I've never caught a tarpon before, so I love fishing. Anytime I can get on the water and fish or take my kids out there with me. Um, Are they really into it too? Yeah, my boys love it. Um, my girls, two of my girls like it. Yeah. Uh, my boys are like... If I wake them up at four in the morning and say, let's go fishing, they're up oh, nice. wide awake. So that, that's the, my deal. What's the biggest fish you've ever caught? Sadly, I've only caught a 41-pound cobia. Um, Is that not big? Because I feel like that's pretty no, big. No, I mean, most – I've caught a 10-pound bass before, okay. largemouth bass. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um, I've caught a redfish that was over 32 inches. That's pretty cool. I caught a 21-pound drum. Um, and I caught a 41-pound cobia. So I'm hopeful that I can catch a 100-pound tarpon in a couple of weeks. That, right. That's my bucket list. Well, we're going to need a picture of that if it happens. Uh, if okay? it happens, Deal? I'll send it Deal. for sure. <laughs> Are you a morning or a night person? Gosh, I'm probably both. Okay. Um, I, I wake up really early so I can study. Um, and then I... I go to bed late because it's part of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm watching film late at night. Um, in order for me to dedicate time to my family, I have to be home when I'm home. So 
that would lead me to stay up late to watch film or talk to coaches and get stuff done. So I'm probably both. All right. If you're not watching film or basketball games, what are you watching? Uh, I love this show on Netflix called Heartland. Okay. Um, most people wouldn't even know what Heartland is. I haven't watched it, but I have heard of it. Yeah, yes. that's my show. <laughs> I, I really, that was, that's my dream to have about 100 acres out in the countryside with a couple of horses and nobody bothering me, I guess. So We'll have to take you to Tom Chambers' house because he's pretty much he's got, got that? that. Yeah, he's got horses, chickens. Cows, That'd pigs, the whole cool. thing. I think you would enjoy it out I'd there. I'd love to see that. All right, Coach, the last question I have for you. What advice did you get that was the most rewarding? Uh, the, mo- the, the best advice that advice I've received over the years um, has been anything that's challenged me to um, be better. Um, and I, I mean that wholeheartedly. Um, it's so easy to kind of get comfortable in our league. You know, once you've made money or you've had some success, uh, there's a tendency to be comfortable. And I've had different people um, in my life, from family members to my mentor, Bill Gebhardt, um, that have taught me to not settle. And um, and, and Coach Pop has always um, told me to just be myself. Um, don't try to... Um, be like everybody else in the NBA to be as authentic as I can be and um, sometimes that's really really boring but um, I'm okay with that but I guess the advice that has really pushed me has been when people have challenged me to go to another level and um, I can't thank those people enough. Awesome. Coach, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. And uh, we enjoyed getting to know you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone.